Yeah, this is your warm-up. So this is actually a little bit of review that we're going to go over. But a couple things I want to um, go over how we're going to multiply uh, fractions. So we've already kind of talked about adding and um, adding and subtracting. Multiplying fractions is considered by many to be a little bit easier than adding and subtracting. And the reason it's a little bit easier, or people consider it easier, is because when you're uh, multiplying, or, multiplying or dividing fractions, we're just going to focus on multiplying. When you're multiplying fractions, we don't have to worry about our lowest common denominator. What we can simply do is multiply our numerators times our numerators and multiply our denominator by our denominator. So I can do 1 times 3, which is going to give me 3. And then over here, I'll do 4 times 4, which is going to give me 16. Then remember, since we're always dealing with fractions, we always want to look if we can reduce the fraction any further. And over here, we can um, uh, we cannot reduce this fraction any further. So let's look at another example. Here I have two thirds and five six. So here we have our denominators are different, but again, with since we're doing fraction, since we're multiplying our fractions, it's okay. We still can just multiply across. Two times five gives you ten. Three times six gives you eighteen. However, here we do have a problem where now we can um, reduce our fraction. And what I mean by reducing our fraction is you want to pull out any kind of um, uh, you want to pull out your common denominators between the two numbers. So if you look at 10 and 18, I say, all right, what numbers do they have in common, or what is the largest number that they have in common? And you guys can see that two is your largest number, so I can actually take out a two. So by taking out a two, if you think of dividing with taking out, if I take out a two out of 10, I'm left with five and take a two out of 18, I'm left with nine. So my final answer for this one actually be five ninths. Let's now start working with a little bit of uh, some, frac or, uh, some negative fractions. So if I have negative fit, five, three fifths times seven halves. Um, over here, I decided to represent the numerator as being negative. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about when is the, what's negative, the numerator, denominator, when it forwards both in a second. But over here, I have the numerator represented as a negative. Again, we're just going to follow a process. Negative 3 times 7 gives you negative 21. 5 times 2 over 10. This fraction cannot be um, factored anymore. So therefore, it is uh, left as negative 21, 21 over 10. The next problem I'd like to go over is, let's say now we have our negative sign is not written as a numerator or denominator, but it's, right, it's written in between them. And then over here, I have a, my fraction and I have my negative sign written in the denominator. Yes? On the 21 over 10, can, can you turn that into a mixed number? Yes, you can. Uh, I'm not going to deal with dealing with mixed numbers because I always I'm going to want your answers as improper fractions, and they're easier to use as improper as improper fractions. But yes, if you wanted to write it as a mixed number, you could write it like that as well. But for this class, um, we're always going to be dealing with improper fractions. All right. So on this problem, um, we need to determine, well, what is this negative sign? Is this saying the whole fraction is negative? Is it saying 6 is negative? Is it saying 5 is negative? Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of example here. But when you're just doing your calculations, it's easiest just to pick top or bottom, which one you want negative. Because I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter here in a second. But for this example, I'll just pick the top. So if I did negative 6 times 7, that gives me 42 over 5 times negative 4, which is a negative 20. Um, I'll look at that and I'll see if I can divide or what can I factor out. Again, that's going to be a 2. So I get 21 over uh, a negative 10. Now, if I was to choose, let's say I would have chose the other one. I'm sorry. That's no, a negative, negative 42. So that would have been possible. Negative 6 times 7 is a negative 42. 5 times negative 4 is a negative 20. Um, the way that I'd like to kind of represent it to you guys is if I were to change this, and let's say I would have written this as a negative 5, well, a negative times a negative would have given me a positive 20. 
and a six times seven would have given me a positive 42. So again, it still would have given me over my exact same answer. So it doesn't really matter which way you guys do it. If you have your negative sign, when you're, when you're given a negative six fifths, and it doesn't say is the negative on the numerator or the denominator, you guys can write it as a negative six over five, or you can write it as a six or a negative five. It's not gonna change the answer in the problem. All right, so that is just a quick little tutorial on how to multiply fractions. Good work.